fun for doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'll I appreciate uh, you. Yeah, I'm gonna drop off, but you guys should should be all set. It looks like you're recording. So excellent. Thank Thanks so fun. much. Okay, have a good one. You Thanks too. so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, well, since we're at a quorum and we're recording, I will go ahead and introduce tonight's uh March 14th, 2023 meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. Um, pursuant to the acts or pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by uh, attending the Zoom link, which has been posted in advance on the town website. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we're unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we'll post um, on the town's YouTube channel um, an audio, a video recording uh, of, this, of this meeting. And then we also will go around and just do um, a sound check. And um, I'll just kind of read across the screen here. So um, you just let us know that you can hear us and, and make sure we can hear you, Robin. Yeah. Julianne? Yes. <laughs> I think you, you said yes as you muted yourself. Yes. <laughs> Cody? Yes. Leah. Yes. Eleanor. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Gotcha. Good. Okay. I'm in a museum lobby, so I might not be talking as much. <laughs> Great. Well, we appreciate you being here. Uh, and Rachel. I'm here. Great. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody, so much. Um, so. Julianne, shall I just uh, proceed with our agenda and then we can go back and forth or do you want to run it or how do you want to? No, you're, you're free to go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I've had a day too, is everybody. So just fair warning, we're both um, a little bit out of pocket, but we are here. Um, so first of all, why don't we just go around? Did anybody have any comments or notes on the minutes that I sent out from Leah? Thanks to um, our... our Wonderful secretary. Any any comments or um, revisions that need to be made on the, on those? Okay, not seeing any. Does anybody want to make a motion to uh, accept those minutes, and we can post those? Um, a motion to accept the minutes for us. Great. We have a second. I'll second it. Why not? Um, and then we'll do a quick roll call vote. Um, Robin. Ruth. Julianne. Yes. Eleanor. Yes. Leah. Yes. And Rachel. Yes. Okay, great. And Leah, I see you actively taking notes there, so I'm not going to create a, a minutes document, right? Okay, great. <laughs> um, okay, so then moving down, um, I don't believe we have any members of the public. Let me just check that. Nope, I don't see any attendees. So we don't have any public comment tonight, but of course, if somebody joins later, they certainly can. Um, and then let me just, I think I'll just jump right into the most sort of pressing and time sensitive piece of discussion. Um, and I'm just gonna preface this by, by I just wanna acknowledge that this is a tough one for me. Um, this is not really where we were hoping to be with this uh, project. And I wanna just also acknowledge actually Eleanor, Leah and Cody, all, all three volunteered to help sort of meet and, and put together the block party. Um, you know, we, we have right now we have our grantees sort of submitting their interest in participating in this, um, but especially Eleanor for, you know, taking the lead on writing and submitting the original festivals and projects grant, which we still have not received any confirmation on out of MCC, which is strange. And I, I did reach out to them 
you know, about three weeks ago, I, I, I can reach out again. But this news, I think, will, will sort of change that. So uh, about, about a week and a half ago, um, the bid notified Julianne and myself that they, they are going to be down a staff member through the spring. Um, so Liz Larson was working with them, um, not full time, but like 80% over time, something like that. And she had um, extenuating circumstances that are taking her away from out of town and out of state. Um, for for the next few months, I don't think it's a clear timeline on on it, but it's a, you know, it's just one of those things that she has to attend to, and so she's, uh, I believe, taking some leave from the bid, definitely scaling back on on what she can do there, um, and and they just, I think they made the hard decision that you know going from 1.8 to 1.0 in terms of staff was just not tenable for them to do this block party this year. Um, so, you know, they, uh, yeah, Julia. Yeah, and I would, I would just add that, you know, as far as event planning and execution, this was ambitious from the, the get go, you know, to identify people, invite them and get every, a, a really large event organized in this amount of time, even, even with a staff of three or four on it would have been ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it was, we were dreaming big um, all the way around. And, you, you know, I think, um, the proposal that they made to us, you know, they did say, look, if, if you guys want to, you know, as volunteers, put this whole thing together, find these vendors, sign these con, you know, if you want to do this whole thing, we, meaning the bid, would be, the, would support it and would, you know, and would still contribute the, the funds that they were going to contribute, cultural district funds, they were going to, you know, they would still be a partner to it. They just couldn't do, as Julianne said, the event planning aspect, which is, Unfortunately, that is, you know, that's what we needed them to do was was really to facilitate the process. So they, they kind of posed a couple of ideas. One was that, you know, and, and they, they knew, they knew that we really couldn't, but they wanted to put it out there, you know, that if we or somebody else wanted to be the, the lead event planner on this, then, then we could, and they would support that. But then they made a pretty earnest um, case that they, you know, we can just start planning for 2024. And, and do us, you know, do a really well thought out, meticulous, you know, methodical spring 24 block party. Um, and then, you know, in anticipation of tonight's meeting, I reached out to uh, MCC and, and talk, asked them about the funds that we had set aside. And they said, you know, it's not a problem. We'll make a note that, you know, that you want to roll these funds forward. And I, I told them, like, we need to make the decision of the council, but, you know, would we be able to roll those funds forward? They, they didn't have any problem with it that, you know, the allocation was made, so they wouldn't try to take it back. And so, you know, Jay responded right away and said, it's not a problem, you know, we'll make a note of it. Um, so it's feasible from the MCC side of things. Um, we don't have to make a commitment tonight for 2024. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many of us are going to be, uh, you know, there's, there's too many variables at this, at this stage, I think it's, but it's, that's a conversation to carry forward. Um, so I'll stop there because I'm sure folks have questions. It's, it's kind of a, a shock. Sure, Robin. So we're asking to give ourselves an extension, essentially, <laughs> right? I mean, I think that's a, that's a, a fun way of saying it. Yeah, that's. I mean, you know, yes. we would we would um, we would postpone this this project. Yeah. So I mean, other events like this. I mean, they plan them for a year. I mean, they do them, they take one, maybe two days off after it, and then they start planning again. I mean, this isn't first night Boston, which I have worked on the production end, um, but it's still a big event. Right. So, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of things involved and, and decisions to be made. And I, I was amazed it got moved to like early May. I mean, I, I can understand why, but it, that seemed like very early. So, um, yeah, and, and you said, I'm having problems with my speaker, uh, my mic, you said we have not heard about the $2,500 grant yet? Wow. Correct. Yeah. Maybe we could use that for some smaller reception or something and, and not, you know, put it together with the 7,500 and then next year if you guys can you know grant even more to it if it's needed and 
I'd like to add as far as the the MCC, while you know we we do have a responsibility to to get funds into the hands of grantees. Um, it, it was nice how quickly Jay came back and it approved the the extension. And if you think about what the amount of extending and revising and working with grantees that we've been doing all along that actually led up to us having this pool of funds at all, um, you know, life can, continues to roll and be complicated and, and, you know, everywhere people are short staffed and still dealing with medical impacts. And it was really nice that they, we had their full support and, and they understood and, and there was no question. And I really do believe that, you know, it's our responsibility to put on a fantastic event with that. So there's, there's a little bit of me that's, that's relieved to have the extra time um, rather than having to, to just be, be scrappy with this. On the other hand, I agree with Matt that it's time for people to be able to get back together in person and collaborate and have culture, but, you know, we just can't force this. So, you know, we have to vote on this as a council, but I, I'm not quite sure the motion to bring to vote because our, our hands are tied and we're moving forward and, and we, we have full support of the MCC. So in, in some ways, that's that's kind of all there is today. And as far as what we would do with the 2500, I guess I would say let's get it first before we go back and look at the particulars of that grant and, and what it's restricted to and whether we have to amend with them. And let's let's actually get the approval before we start iterating on what that can be. Let's ha actually have the thing. So that's kind of where we are with suddenly with a lot of time on our hands to to devote to other other um uh, initiatives i guess yeah totally i mean it's sorry if it is loud in the background but uh it's a it's a bummer but i think that it makes total sense and i agree you know we want to do the the best event we possibly can um and the 2024 one might be that and i do you know i agree we'll get the grant before we look at the specifics but I do love Robin's idea of some kind of reception, just bringing people together. I think that's what it was about in the end, just like a way to, you know, bring our artists together and also maybe some people in the town or something. But yeah, just about art and community. That makes total sense. Yeah, now I'm really kind of hoping we get that grant. I, I mean, this, you know, this idea is warming up to me a little bit, like, you know, rent the Hitchcock Center for a night or whatever and have people oh. come together and just a little reception for the grantees, just a little mingling thing and see what kind of ideas, but I'll take Julianne's point. We're going to wait and get the, and get the funds first, but, but no, you're, you know, you're right. I mean, if, if what we were feeling was the need to get people together physically, you know, we could bring grantees together in a low stress environment. That, that's a, that's a nice idea. Rachel. Hi. So, just to make sure I'm understanding everyone correctly, Julian, you're proposing that we wait to to um, hear about that grant before we actually talk specifics. And then as of, as for the 2,500, we've already set aside. Is that, is that up to us now? 7,500. 7,500. 7, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of something. Yeah. I was thinking of something else, sorry. So are we saying that now we, can go ahead and, and plan something different with that or are you saying wait for the approval to so so to with use that, that money in a different way yeah so with that um we are approved to extend and do the event in 2024 however if the council wanted to to vote you know in between now and the next grant cycle to roll that money back into a grant cycle and do no event that is also a possibility. I don't think any of us necessarily want to, to do that, uh, but, but it's important to know that that's an option because what if something changes and we find that, you know, we still don't have a partner to, to do the events management and, and, and planning, uh, or there, there's just many contingencies. And again, our, our uh, responsibility is, is to support the community with these funds, right? So we do have options along the way, um, but we don't have to vote today as to exactly what we're going to do. You know, I certainly support doing the event and doing it well in 2024. If anybody is, is against that, you know, <laughs> it'd be good to know, but um, we don't have to bring that part to a vote today. 
So not anything theory. else on that. No, that, that's, that's accurate. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, um, the 7,500 is, is safe to roll forward. And I, I don't think we're going to tonight, we're not going to make any new decision on what to do with those funds. And so in theory, go ahead, Leo. Then I'll would, ask my question later. Would there be a possibility that these funds would be, are we thinking of using these funds to save and then use this grant for 2024? Or are we thinking of doing a, using these on a smaller reception and then reapplying for the grants and projects the next year for that? No, I think I think where things stand right now, and you know, but all things are open for discussion. But but what we did with we took our you know we took our core funding sort funding, we set aside seventy five hundred of that for this project, and I think the the idea on the table is let's not make any new decision about that seventy five hundred tonight. Let's understand that we're not going to go forward for for May with the block party. But I, I don't think right now anybody's proposing to use that money at all. Like. Let's right. probably keep that sum as as is sort of standing alone. If this 2,500 does come, Robin's point was kind of, if this other unrelated, not unrelated, but but unrelated grant um, for festivals and projects comes yes. in, if, if, if we have that, pro if we have that quote unquote problem or situation, then we'll have a new decision to make. And, and you, know, you know, we could, we could decide to roll that forward or we could repurpose that. But I, I think until we have that funds, you know, as, as Julianne said, I'll let Julianne clarify. And then Cody's been waiting patiently, I think. That's what I was going to clarify was that Cody had had his hand up. Yeah. <laughs> so can I ask my question then, or like the, the follow-up to just what you're sure, saying? Oh, ahead. Cody, do you want to, does Cody want to talk first and then? Go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I guess my, just to make sure I understand this correctly, in theory, we don't, we can make a new decision or um, or just we can make our decision about this this amount we've already set aside towards the end of this year, right? That's the latest we would need to decide about it. Is that correct? Because as we evaluate the next round, is that is that fair to think of it that way? That in theory, we can decide at that point. That would be the latest we have to decide, obviously. But we, does, does it, is it fair to say that we have this whole period to think about what if, might make sense wanted, to do with them. that. That money was set aside with MCC for a local council activity, a local activity. And, and that's something that, you know, that's really all they need to know in terms of the budgeting. They just need to know we set that aside for our purpose. If we want to use it for something other than we described to them, we would communicate that to them and make sure that, it, you know, we would, we would communicate to them just sort of through email. It wouldn't go through the official process but in in theory you know if our council saw an urgent community need in the next <sighs> nine months we could repurpose we, we could repurpose that 7500 i don't think anybody well yeah so we could and okay at that best practice you know would would be you know as we're finalizing the next round we better have a purpose for that and if not you know if for some reason we don't then it needs to probably go into the next round but because it's in 2024 it would be extended beyond when we're finalizing the next grant cycle right but we have but, in 2024 to, to do it but right but we, I'd we, be we can we with, with finalizing the next grant cycle and not like really truly having an event and holding it back myself right right i just meant that we could we could wait until that that cycle to decide. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Um, all right. And Cody, so we could. Robin, Cody, could, Cody's been waiting. Yeah, Cody. Yeah. No. Yeah. Cody. Uh, yeah, I was just like the combination. Do something more immediate, but also fulfill the uh, commitment of doing the block for the next year. 
That's a, that's a good question. So you're, you're saying if we, right, if we, we already have sort of a, a soft commitment to doing a block party with our grantees, the word is out. Now we can explain, look, you know, the, the bid can't do it this year. And we, we don't, we're not gonna be able to make a decision about 2024 today. But you're right, if we repurpose those funds, then, you know, then we, there would be that question of, well, whatever, we were really excited about that block party, whatever happened to that block party. So I, and I think I, I actually personally feel that way as well, that, you know, if we, if we went a different direction between now and December, we would, you know, I, I think we owe it to the, <laughs> to the idea and to those folks who are interested in it to continue to explore the block. And as Julianne said, you know, maybe the bid won't be able to do it next year. I mean, and, and, but, but maybe we could find a different partner. Maybe some of these funds can go to paying an event planner, you know, I mean, um, there are the, like, there are possibilities here. So I, I appreciate that point, Cody. Am I capturing what you were, what you were getting at? Yeah, I do have a follow-up question, you know, attending the four national book does a bit also do the four one and is that a possibility to say, you know, let's collab? That is an interesting idea. I have to say it hadn't even occurred to me, but but um, that is an interesting idea. Um, hmm. So... Can I can I piggyback on that? Yeah, please. But what if the twenty five hundred comes through, right? Or some decent portion of that? What if we piggyback on to the fall block party to specifically have some designated area and reception for our grantees um, and our work at the block party with those funds? Just an idea. I think that's a great idea idea and that, that keeps some of it in this year it also keeps a sizable chunk of it for a meaningful event that's planned in advance properly so um again we'd be waiting to see about that other uh sum of money and how much we have and whether it could support that but that would give us enough time and a lot of the grantees um will be completing their events between now and then so whatever we would come up with as some sort of a community engagement with them, I think they'd be better prepared than they might've been in May. Robin, yeah. Okay. Um, so just in general, we can use up to 20% of the allocation each year for almost anything we want, as long as it's relevant. Um, so, and you can change your mind. I mean, this is COVID, everybody's been changing their minds and having to do other things. Um, so in theory, if it's not used at all, it can go back into the next year's pool and it can be taken out again, or it could be kept and then another sum for 24. Yeah, 24 <laughs> could also be allocated. Um, so those are possibilities or, you know, using some of it, if, I'm not sure what the 25 hundred dollar grant was what the specifics of it was and what it says you have to do for um i don't know maybe showcasing um disabled artists and then do a larger event there or or ethnic artists specifically i mean it would mean reaching out but we you know it could be any number of things we wanted to do or not music <laughs> As much as I love music, we could focus on, you know, theater or science geeks or something. I mean, we could do anything we want for the most part. I mean, within it being arts and culture, but pretty much whatever we want. So, um, so we could actually end up with more um, if waited and the next year you put more money into it. Yeah. Um, so Eleanor has to leave at 630. And, and as somebody who's been kind of 
helping drive this, I I would rather not make a final decision without her in the car. I mean, we don't have to, but, but I will say this, Robin is, Robin's a hundred percent right. You know, that we could spend 2,500, we could commit 2,500 in our local project um, account. We could commit that to the fall block party now and replenish that 7,500. We can replenish that in our next grant cycle. That it certainly would be, you know, an, an option for us to to do um i i think maybe we're it's a little premature i think maybe what we want is a conversation with the bid to find out if this is something that they would be interested in accommodating um i think it's really worth pursuing because honestly just when you said it cody i just thought that really softens the blow to any grantee who was excited about this is it at least, you know we can't quite pull it off but we can offer something this fall. Um, Julian, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. We're in no position to vote on it today because we don't we don't have, you know, the, the acceptance from the group that's organizing it. But I think given the, the factors here, they, they they should be supportive of that. So I think we do have to, to table it and not vote on anything specifically today. But I really appreciate, Cody, that you brought up that idea. I fully support and think that, yeah, it's a much better pivot than just wait a year. We'll do it. <laughs> Very good. Great discussion. So, Eleanor, I, I, with two minutes to spare, I think you could be free to go when you're ready. Thanks so much for joining from Thank you so the much, West guys. Coast. Of course. Um, I'm glad to see all of you guys. I am right now, I'm in Los Angeles and I'm in the Academy Museum, um, which is so the Academy cool. as in like the Oscars. Yeah, like it's, oh. it's really cool. I, I think it's a newer museum, but I, if you're ever in the area, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, my parents have died, so I have no reason, even then I had no reason to go to LA because they lived in LA. They, were so. they from there? Oh, well, no, yeah, New York, but ever... they moved to LA. I was 20, so I was there a lot. Well, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's really been rainy here, which is a little unfortunate, but we've done a lot of the cool inside stuff. Well, the weather is lovely in Amherst. You're really missing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I got the the school right. campus is closed email today. This oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Enjoy. Well, well, thank you. Bye, guys. Good travels. You enjoy. Thank you. Um. Yeah. No, I wasn't suggesting, and and I'm not going to hear you guys make a decision. Just we're brainstorming ideas and possibilities. So. Yep. yep. I mean, it's basically, well, I, I we have the creativity and person power to do. But you're absolutely right, and that's a, it's a really good point. Is that we certainly can plan to replenish, and and plan. You know, we can plan safely for that. Down if if that becomes an option. And, Rachel, and please, we should hear about the festivals grant to know how much that is. I mean, that's that's kind of past due. And I do see that Rachel has her hand up as well. Yeah, thank you for raising that idea, Cody. Because as we were talking, I was actually thinking, like, hey, do we have to, you know. If, if we if we want to use that money in the fall, then either I don't know what the scale of the block party would be. And if um, we were to do something for our grantees in um, either a space that's associated with the block party in the fall or um, immediately before or immediately after so that, you know, all the publicity is all ready done and we just tag on to that, say the Cultural Council is also hosting this because that timing seems ideal for promoting the next round of grant applications too, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be a venue for answering questions and, and trying to attract more um, new applicants as well as just maybe having conversations with people who have received grants from the council in the past. So I think timing and, and venue would, would both be the ideal. Um, and I was going to throw out this crazy idea of like, well, what if we just did the Pecha Kucha at the same time? You know, I was kind <laughs> so, of. Anyway, so since we're brainstorming and just throw that out there. I think with Pecha Kucha, we were leaving it at um that's a total reboot from where where we were in the past and we haven't even started with outreach and we funded um the other group um the the one. Swan, yeah. and so they're coming to amherst and we get to kind of experience from there and build from there and iterate so i'm i'm comfortable 
with that at, at this point. I'm, I'm committed to getting that going at some point here in the, in the near future. Um, but um, I think I, I'm, I'll be ready myself um, to, to address that in, in a few months and, and start, you know, considering outreach and timing and, and, and setting, you know, funds aside. And I'd, I'd like that to not come from either of, you know, the 2,500 or the 7,500 at this point. I'm going to do it in a meaningful way and hopefully partner with someone to donate space and mitigate some of the costs we had in the past. Cody, please. And then Leah. Um, right. So, friends, I think a point that I want to provide space for a grant here. Hey, as I do it August, September, before it starts to pick up, because I just think there was a handful of grantees or applicants who not knowing what to put on a grant app killed their chances. Also, maybe we want to invite those who the statement to performance or will apply here and we get the senior center issue where we see 10 people applying. So, and definitely Q and A may be info session. Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I had that same thought when Rachel shared the idea. I mean, we've done our best with the public info sessions to get the word out there, social media, et cetera. But physically having a table and a presence at that block party, you can have more conversations with folks about their applications. Um, you know, and, and yeah, I agree with you 100%. I also think, you know, we are going to be down at least two spots come the summer, come soon, come now, <laughs> as of right now. So I think, it, you know, if we're all smiling and we're in attendance and, you know, we look like we, you know, look like well-adjusted folks that, that people might enjoy working with, we might be able to recruit some new um, counselors, you know, if we had a presence there too. So I think there's just a lot of really great benefits to the idea. And um and Leah, please. Yeah, I was going to say kind of along the same lines of Cody getting um, reconnecting and building relationships with past grantees and then potential new grantees and members. And I think having a presence at an event where like it's already pretty well known, a lot of people go and um, it's well attended. I think that that's like a nice like almost like step into because like the big block festival, I think is a lot of things. So it might be nice to have this presence and table and figure that out and then um, go to like a bigger thing. And then also in terms of using money for things, another like having some kind of a like working on outreach to potential new grantees and having, I feel like it would be hard to at the block party have like a like info session about like help writing grants or what we're looking for, but maybe something to get over that barrier. We could think about, cause that might not be a lot of funding. Like I would be happy to volunteer, like do like a Zoom or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I've shared this before, but I, I do think particularly for new grantees or folks who have been declined in the past, just having a personal relationship and email dialogue or phone call or zoom i mean you know that that has really helped a lot of folks get applications in 
and and I think if we're physically making a presence, yeah. then you know that builds a connection with somebody, and and they're more likely to, you know, follow up and ask for help. So so yeah, I'm completely completely with you. So I, I mean, uh, we could we could go on with this for a while, and I think new ideas are going to pop up. Um, but I think we have a clear action step here here, which is to, you know, get back to the bid, um, and find out if it is feasible for us to have a dedicated space at the fall block party? And if so, what kind of space? Um, and actually, I will say that I, I would like to get the word out to our grantees sooner rather than later that this is not happening in May. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, I it's, it's March 14th now. If our next meeting is, you know, second Tuesday in April, um, that, that's too late for me to get the word out to those grantees. I, I need to let them know this week. I, I almost did it before the meeting just because some folks are chomping at the bit, but I thought let's let's talk first. Um, I, I, I'm not going to make any promise to them about 2024 block party, obviously. you know I, I mean, I'll tell them that working we're working on other ideas. Um, so I, I guess what I'm going to just tell them is like we're working on some contingency options and please stay tuned. You know, because I and, and just keep it at non-committal, but but I, I feel compelled to get the word out there in the next week or two. I don't know, Julie, I'm kind of looking at you, Julianne. Like, you know, it, it seems like we really need to let people know. Um, and so I'm just I, I will keep it non-committal in terms of of other things, but I will tell them we're gonna we're working on other opportunities to do a similar thing. Does that sound good? Yeah, and I agree. It's not fair to anyone to delay any longer. People are holding the date, you know. So we, we, yeah, yeah absolutely. And not non-committal, but you know, something positive, and that just, you know, as it evolves, we'll be in touch with those who responded, you know, as a priority. And I think I'll probably put something on our social media feeds as well because, you know, it hasn't been the subject of, of newspaper articles, but it's been report. You know, we've we've announced it <laughs> a couple of times, and it's been reported in a few places so you know we need to scale that back as well yeah. um so why don't we i think we're all going to keep thinking i will find out or julian and i will talk to the bid and, and sort of find out what their appetite is for for both fall and then you know how are we going to begin to plan for for next year if if at all um and then but i think we have time to brainstorm and and potentially come to, you know, come closer to a decision next month about, you know, using some set of money for, for fall. Um, so do we want to move on to grant updates, Julian? You did. Hey, all right. So uh, the grant updates fall into uh, two categories, um, basically for, for 2022. Two um, and then also for 2023. I'll start with 2023 since that's the grant year that everyone is most familiar with. Uh, we have submitted the paperwork to the town to disperse most of the grants. Uh, there are uh, at this point just uh, a handful that we're, we're waiting on just some uh, final kind of documentation, whether it's correcting a W-9, uh, or um, uh, I think that that's the majority of it. That looks like that's um, one, two, three groups are are short some of the current year documentation. We have two other groups that are still working on uh, final grant reports for 2022 before we can release their funds. So we are very, very finished to being done with all of um, the the direct granting for 2023. Uh, maybe of interest, there are only two grantees who have not been in touch at all. Um, and uh, that amounts to the 1794 Meeting House grantee uh, who would have been awarded $145 and the Society to Benefit Everyone who would have uh, been awarded $95. So that, to me at this moment, looks like the sum total of what will be rolling um, through to to uh, 2024 that has not been claimed. Does anyone have any questions about that? So it's been a, a pretty 
tidy process as, as it turns out. So we're in really great shape. So then moving on to 2022, I have fantastic news over there uh, on, on one front, which is to date at this point for every single grantee, um, and there were there were 59 of them, we have um, for, for 48 of them, we have received their final grant report documentation which means, uh, and then there were uh, a handful of them, five of them that have been extended, um, who don't owe us a final grant report just yet. And this means that there are five remaining who have completed events that owe us final grant reports. And the fantastic news as of this week is we have uh, had communication from every single one of them that of those last five, that if we don't have their final grant report, that it is coming. So I just I just want to say this in support of our decision to move to direct granting and any of the concerns that were out there uh, that people wouldn't be um, fiscally responsible or or just as far as um, the the paperwork to support this that they wouldn't be responsible that we've got a fantastic group of grantees who uh, with a little bit of nudging and follow up of uh, are they have mostly all complied and the rest are are about to comply so um, this has been great you know people travel they're out of the country I mean Lord people are working remotely from other countries because they can um, so it's it's a whole different world as far, far as being in touch with people so uh, we made a good decision and our grantees are working with this so uh, the the next steps on 2022 is that uh, Robin will be turning over all of the physical papers that she has either to me directly or to Angela. Angela has requested that we turn in all of that documentation. I have a, a pretty big chunk of digital documentation that I'll be working with Angela to turn that oh, over. You don't, to her. We should I'm talk, sorry. Julie, we should talk. You don't want to do that amount of work. I have it all. I have it all in hard then copy. Please just give it to Angela. If you'll just give it to Angela, just literally transfer the stack of papers to her and we can take it from there. Uh, I do have a small amount of, of paperwork where I've been compiling uh, the final grant reports. And I think, Robin, you might have the, the physical uh, grants. So by the end of um, March, I am committed that we will both get all of that into Angela for her to take care of archiving it as she has requested from us. So and I think we're in great shape. Hopefully we'll have those last stragglers. We'll be able to put those in there with them. Otherwise I'll have to extend just a little bit longer, but I know this will be a huge weight off of you, Robin, to be able to, to transfer that to the town to archive and Angela will be taking care of that. So we are great. Yes, Leah, thank you. Um, Just to get the notes accurate, um, is it's 48 grantees have sent us the final grant report and are all set. Five have an extension and five have not submitted grant reports but are in communication. There might be one in there. I don't know if I want those numbers. There was, there was one who, sorry, there's one who never got his funds at all. So there, there's a little bit of slop in here as far as folks who, um, didn't do the paperwork so um let, let me reply to you offline with the exact numbers oh, of just how it, many grants there yeah. were and but we're we're in good shape as far as what's remaining and is it important to we don't we haven't necessarily reported it in years past I, I i brought it up from a numeric point of view solely to reassure everyone that we lost leia who i'm explaining this to um People are complying, you know, with a little nudging. They are. It's good. Uh, I would say probably one one area where we can improve going forward is um, spelling out uh, how how to use our logo and credit us. Most folks are crediting us in some way, but you know, if we want to be more particular about how they uh, are required to credit us, we we could do that in um, future grant years. So that's, that's an all. Interesting point. Mm -hmm. Um, because, <clears throat> and I might be wrong on this, MCC guidelines are very clear about the requirement to credit them. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that our local guidelines are clear that we, and we can, but I don't know that we, we explicitly tell folks we need them to credit 
us directly. Yeah. Don't so we didn't even have contract? a logo when I started here. We didn't even have an official logo for folks to use to credit us. So, you know, it's it's been evolving, right? Well, let's, um, let's make a note to check that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. The Doesn't the contract say? It's, it's not it's as clear as the MCC problem. is. Yeah, it, it does. Well, yeah. But, but it's not um, a mandate. And I'm not sure that, I'm not sure, number one, I'm not sure we want, we want to mandate it. But number two, it should be in our guide. That's that's where that should okay, be. Okay, so 22 said properly credit the Amherst Cultural Council and Mass Cultural Council for their financial support. Access the ACC logo here. So right. you do yeah. say that's in the contract. It you is. know, in, in folks' um, defense, if we, not that we would have to defend them, but, you know, it's kind of unfair for the grantees who completed their events the calendar year before you know, um, <laughs> how, how are they supposed to go back and credit us when they didn't even know they were supposed to do it? So there's some continuity issues that we have there as well with the, the way our um, uh, grant cycle runs for 18 months. But is, to the extent that we can clarify it and stick to that, you know, for grant cycles going forward, I think that will, will help get the word out. So great. So I guess that's it. Do we have um, new business? I, I, um we do not we lost our we lost our secretary but which is okay we can fill in the notes she'll take oh, from the notes in the recording waiting room no she's not mm -mm. um no she seems to have lost something no i don't think um, we just that people should look for new members two or yep. three i don't know if lee is going to still be a member or not um yeah cody and rachel i mean you know as you as you go about your day, if you come across Amherst residents who, um, you know, who are civically minded and have a cultural bent, please, you know, just it's a very um, well, you both know because you've both filled it out. But the the CAF form uh, community activity form CAF CAF Amherst, if you Google it, it's, it's the first hit. Um, it's quick to fill out and folks can, you know, folks can do that and please encourage them to do so quickly because um, I think Angela is, is, as we speak, probably working towards getting, a, you know, a, a crop for interviews. Um, I did put it out on the social media a few weeks ago, and I'll I'll put it out again. Um, but I, in my opinion, it's always best to just, if you can find a neighbor or a friend or a colleague or family member, <laughs> you know, that's, I think it's always best to have a personal touch. Yeah, I can, if there's a link, I can definitely share it. Yeah, it's actually, uh, I, I put it on the Facebook for the Cultural Council, and I'm, I'll just drop the link right in. Here, it's just the Amherst. Um, the, uh, Sorry, are we able to use the chat? <laughs> oh, no. the, chat's, the chat's enabled, okay. Um, so also, I you might want to talk about, because I won't be here, um, replenishing the high school students. Yes. Leia has offered to take care of that. I know she's on that. But Robin, I, I think that's an important thing for us to keep pursuing. It really brought a lot to us. Um, so, okay. And we've had discussions with that with Angela too. So she's aware. Yeah, she, I think she may have been the one who brought in, I don't know. She, she It's near and dear to our heart. I'll say that. Um, Doesn't she live across the street from Leah? <laughs> who, Angela? She can, she can tell us herself. Does Angela live across the street from you, Leah? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having um just like tech issues with my phone and my computer. No problem. So we've confirmed not only not only dear but near. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we didn't have any new um notes for the minutes, Leah, but we were just we were just saying amongst ourselves the importance of trying to recruit um new candidates. Um and then also that you were on top of sort of connecting with the right teachers and, and student groups um, at the high school and uh, you know same goes for for Amherst College and and 
all of you know college students as well as high school students um so all right well i think we have um uh, this is a really really productive discussion i want to thank you all very much for you know for being thoughtful and open-minded and um well, should we just go ahead now and just stick with second tuesdays second tuesday seems like it's consistent anyway you know i know it's not perfect for everybody but at least it's predictable <laughs> seems good okay great all right all right, well then let's go ahead and call this meeting to adjourn and uh, thank you all very much for, for your time and your work. Thanks all, good to see thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Take care, bye.